fellow DIYer like yourselves. Today I'm working with Sarah Dulman, a scientist here at Promega, and she's going to be teaching me the ins and outs of how to do a DIY hybrid CRISPR experiment in my lab. So first, safety. Then let's get started. Hey Sarah, thank you so much for being with us here today to teach us this Hybit CRISPR protocol. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me in the lab. Great, so let's get started. Yeah, so the first thing we need to think about is the protein of interest for you. Where you want to tag it, protein structure, what you're interested in looking at. So what are you working with? I would like to monitor your protein dynamics in an intracellular protein using the T-term. Perfect. So regardless of where you want to tag it, the first thing we need to get is the genomic sequence of your protein. So there's lots of websites available that you can use, like one from the NCBI, and we can go on and pull off the full genomic sequence, including both five prime and three prime UTRs. Okay, so then how do I know that I'm getting the whole sequence? So with NCBI, for example, the sequence number will include an NG or an NC, and that's a good way to know. And then once we have that, then we need to think about where you want to put the tag. So it sounds like the C-terminus for mm -hmm. you. So what we want to do is find that portion of the protein, and with the C-terminus, you're going to want to insert it before the stop codon. If it was N-terminal, you'd want to insert it after the start codon. So this is a protocol of what we're going to be looking at here today when we're working on the Hybit CRISPR. Um, once we have your genomic sequence and all the information that we need, then we get to start designing the guide RNA. So the guide RNA consists of two parts. It's a CRISPR RNA that's going to be specific for each target and a tracer RNA that's readily available. And so um, to get your guide RNAs, the first thing we need to do then is pull the sequence. So we're gonna look for your C terminal and we're gonna look for that stop codon. You can do this using DNA analysis software. And then we're gonna find a region 50 nucleotides downstream of the stop for your C terminal insertion and about 50 nucleotides upstream if you were doing an N terminal insertion. So we can plug this sequence into freely available software, and that will recommend a number of different guide RNA sequences. Awesome. So since these sites are giving me a number of guide RNAs to choose from, like how many should I pick and how many of these should I choose? Mm -hmm. So you're going to look for protospacer adjacent motif sites or PAM sites that are downstream of the stack codon for your C-terminal insertion. Okay. And it would be upstream of start codon for an N-term insertion. I recommend picking maybe three to five different guides to try. You're likely gonna get a different efficiency of insertion with the different guides. And I'd also try to pick guides, if you can, um, that are based on PAM sites within 10 to 20 nucleotides of where you're hoping to insert the tag. Okay. And so really that's it for as far as your guide RNAs go. Those are the things that you need to think about. And then the other thing to design is the donor DNA template. And to design this, you're just going to go back to the genomic sequence that you pulled and copy 50 nucleotides upstream and downstream of where the insertion site is going to be. And you're going to put that habit sequence symmetrically right in the middle of that. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to do. Another good tip is you can introduce a silent mutation in the PAM sequence of the donor DNA template, and that will avoid recutting. You can use the link below to get your hybrid sequence. So yeah, that's really all we need to think about here designing for the CRISPR hybrid.